fellow YouTubers. Now today, I did what I usually do, and I walked out to the cellar, and I opened the cellar door, and I walked down, and I looked around a little bit. Because we have a lot of snakes that overwinter in the cellar, and I like to see if I can come up with anything new or something that I haven't seen. And today, luckily, I did just that. Now this is what I picked up. This is an Eastern Yellow-Bellied Racer. Okay? Real pretty little snake. Now, if this is a male, it can grow up to about four feet in length. Now, females can grow up to six feet, or right at about. But it's just a beautiful little snake. This is what they look like when they're young. It gives them really good camouflage, as you can see here. It's a really pretty snake. My camera is probably not focusing very well. But anyway... It's a pretty, pretty little snake. Now I'm going to toss a couple of photographs up here. They are not mine. I do not own them. They came off of a public domain search on Google. But I'm going to hit you with those and show you what this species looks like as an adult. Because you'd be astounded the difference between what it looks like now and what it's going to look like if it lives long enough to grow up. Pictures coming at you right now. All right, as you can see, it's a pretty little snake when it gets bigger if it lives long enough because yes this will be returned to the wild just like everything else that i catch and that i show you guys i keep them for a short while and i look at them i study them a little bit and then they go back into the wild where they belong now i did not initially know what this was that i had picked up i thought you know kind of resembles a gopher snake it's definitely not any species of gopher snake that I've ever seen. Not that I'm familiar with all the species, but there are several in Kansas. But I know it's not a bull snake. And I know that it's not a prairie king because of that tail. Prairie kings here do not have that solid colored tail. So it took me a minute to do a little research to figure out precisely what it is that I had found. And... The reason I point this out is because I'd already picked it up, of course, and handled it. But despite the fact that I did not know what it was, I knew for sure, absolutely for sure, what it was not. And that's how herp identification works, okay? If you're trying to identify these small snakes and things like that, it's not so important that you know precisely what you've got as it is to know precisely what you don't have. Because Kansas has officially... 42 species of snake that live here. However, we only have three native species that are toxic. All three of those are, excuse me, four native species that are toxic. Three of those are rattlesnake and one is a copperhead. Okay, we have the Masaga, which is a really small rattlesnake species. It is toxic. Well, this is definitely not a rattlesnake. Although, if you just seen this pattern through the grass, you might, you might be convinced that's what you saw. And that's probably what this little guy or gal relies on. Okay, we also have prairie rattler. It's definitely not a prairie rattler. Okay, it's definitely not, uh, we'll say I said prairie, prairie rattler and masaga. Okay, we also have a timber rattler here. But it's also not a very big snake. And the color patterns on it are really beautiful. And like I said, we do have the copperhead. Other than that, we have two other species. Because we have a western rattler that was introduced here. But is still in very small numbers. And a lot further over towards Colorado than where I am. They haven't made it to this part of the state yet. And 
officially we do have a water moccasin or you guys may know them as cottonmouth we also have those in the state of kansas but officially they are still down in the southeast corner and have not officially been seen anywhere else however we do see them further north all the time and because of climate change they are moving north so anyway i just thought it was a really interesting find and it's amazing what this is going to turn into when it grows up if it lives long enough if it can hide well and nothing else eats it i know the camera's probably not doing it justice but it is a very very pretty snake if you look at the stomach, you can see that belly is already kind of starting to turn. And this pattern in the scales will remain on the adult, but the outside of the skin will blue over. That pattern will still be underneath the blue. And in certain light conditions, you will be able to see that. And this little snake here eats all kinds of things, including other snakes, reptiles. You know, lizards, it'll eat spiders, it'll eat insects, it'll eat anything it can overpower. Now, you guys may know that certain snakes are normally either constrictors or they are venomous. Well, this snake happens to be neither. This is an exception to the rule. They have tremendous speed and agility, and that is what they use to overtake and subdue their prey. They are neither venomous or constrictor. So that in itself makes these a very special snake. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you made it this far through the video, uh, questions or comments, drop those down below. And guys, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet and you'd like to, reach over there and hit that subscription button for me. Reach over there and click the bell and click all notifications if you want to be notified when I upload future videos. And hey, I thank you guys very, very much for your views and your support. And my current subscribers, thank you so much. You guys don't know how much you mean to me. And for you guys that are new to the channel and who are reaching down and clicking that button, if you haven't already, right now, thank you. Thank you very much. I'll get another video out to you guys here today. Thanks for watching.